Analytic Number Theory, Wikipedia Article Audio In mathematics, analytic number theory is a branch of number theory that uses methods from mathematical analysis to solve problems about the integers. It is often said to have begun with Peter Gustav Lejeune Dirichlet S1837 introduction of Dirichlet L functions to give the first proof of Dirichlet's theorem on arithmetic progressions. It is well known for its results on prime numbers and additive number theory. Analytic number theory can be split up into two major parts divided more by the type of problems they attempt to solve than fundamental differences in technique. Branches of Analytic Number Theory History Much of analytic number theory was inspired by the prime number theorem. Let pi be the prime counting function that gives the number of primes less than or equal to x, for any real number x. For example, Pi equals 4 because there are 4 prime numbers less than or equal to 10. The prime number theorem then states that x slash ln is a good approximation to pi, in the sense that the limit of the quotient of the two functions pi and x slash ln as x approaches infinity is 1. Known as the asymptotic law of distribution of prime numbers. Adrien-Marie Legendre conjectured in 1797 or 1798 that pi is approximated by the function a slash plus b, where a and b are unspecified constants. In the second edition of his book on number theory he then made a more precise conjecture, with a equals 1 and b equals 1.08366. Carl Friedrich Gauss considered the same question, I'm jar 1792 odor 1793, according to his own recollection nearly 60 years later in a letter to Enki, he wrote in his logarithm table the short note Prims Allen Unter, A, equals, A, Ellen, A. But Gauss never published this conjecture. In 1838 Peter Gustav Lejeune Dirichlet came up with his own approximating function, the logarithmic integral Li. Both Legendre's and Dirichlet's formulas imply the same conjectured asymptotic equivalence of pi and x slash ln stated above, although it turned out that Dirichlet's approximation is considerably better if one considers the differences instead of quotients. Johann Peter Gustav Lejeune Dirichlet is credited with the creation of analytic number theory, a field in which he found several deep results and in proving them introduced some fundamental tools, many of which were later named after him. In 1837 he published Dirichlet's theorem on arithmetic progressions, using mathematical analysis concepts to tackle an algebraic problem and thus creating the branch of analytic number theory. In proving the theorem, he introduced the Dirichlet characters and L functions. In 1841 he generalized his arithmetic progressions theorem from integers to the ring of Gaussian integers, z, i. In two papers from 1848 and 1850, the Russian mathematician Pafnudi Lvovich Chibyshev attempted to prove the asymptotic law of distribution of prime numbers. His work is notable for the use of the zeta function zeta predating Riemann's celebrated memoir of 1859, and he succeeded in proving a slightly weaker form of the asymptotic law namely, that if the limit of pi slash as x goes to infinity exists at all, then it is necessarily equal to 1. He was able to prove unconditionally that this ratio is bounded above and below by two explicitly given constants near to 1 for all x. Although Chibyshev's paper did not prove the prime number theorem, his estimates for pi were strong enough for him to prove Bertrand's postulate that there exists a prime number between n and 2n for any integer n greater than or equal to 2. 
precursors. Bernhard Riemann made some famous contributions to modern analytic number theory. In a single short paper, he investigated the Riemann zeta function and established its importance for understanding the distribution of prime numbers. He made a series of conjectures about properties of the zeta function, one of which is the well-known Riemann hypothesis. Extending the ideas of Riemann, two proofs of the prime number theorem were obtained independently by Jacques Hadamard and Charles-Jean de la Vallée-Poussa and appeared in the same year. Both proofs used methods from complex analysis establishing as a main step of the proof that the Riemann zeta function zeta is non-zero for all complex values of the variable s that have the form s equals 1 plus it with t0. Dirichlet The biggest technical change after 1950 has been the development of sieve methods, particularly in multiplicative problems. These are combinatorial in nature, and quite varied. The extremal branch of combinatorial theory has in return been greatly influenced by the value placed in analytic number theory on quantitative upper and lower bounds. Another recent development is probabilistic number theory, which uses methods from probability theory to estimate the distribution of number theoretic functions, such as how many prime divisors a number has. Developments within analytic number theory are often refinements of earlier techniques, which reduce the error terms and widen their applicability. For example, the circle method of Hardy and Littlewood was conceived as applying to power series near the unit circle in the complex plane, it is now thought of in terms of finite exponential sums. The needs of Diophantin approximation are for auxiliary functions that are not generating functions their coefficients are constructed by use of a pigeonhole principle and involve several complex variables. The fields of Diophantin approximation and transcendence theory have expanded, to the point that the techniques have been applied to the Mordell conjecture. Theorems and results within analytic number theory tend not to be exact structural results about the integers, for which algebraic and geometrical tools are more appropriate. Instead, they give approximate bounds and estimates for various number theoretical functions, as the following examples illustrate. Chi by Chef Euclid showed that there are infinitely many prime numbers. An important question is to determine the asymptotic distribution of the prime numbers, that is, a rough description of how many primes are smaller than a given number. Gauss, amongst others, after computing a large list of primes, conjectured that the number of primes less than or equal to a large number n is close to the value of the integral. Riemann in 1859 Bernhard Riemann used complex analysis and a special meromorphic function now known as the Riemann zeta function to derive an analytic expression for the number of primes less than or equal to a real number x. Remarkably, the main term in Riemann's formula was exactly the above integral, lending substantial weight to Gauss's conjecture. Riemann found that the error terms in this expression, and hence the manner in which the primes are distributed, are closely related to the complex zeros of the zeta function. Using Riemann's ideas and by getting more information on the zeros of the zeta function, Jacques Hadamard and Charles-Jean de la Vallée-Poussa managed to complete the proof of Gauss's conjecture. In particular, they proved that if Hadamard and de la Vallée-Poussa. Then, this remarkable result is what is now known as the prime number theorem. It is a central result in analytic number theory. Loosely speaking, it states that given a large number n, the number of primes less than or equal to n is about n slash log. Modern times. More generally, 
the same question can be asked about the number of primes in any arithmetic progression a and nq for any integer n. In one of the first applications of analytic techniques to number theory, Dirichlet proved that any arithmetic progression with a and q ka prime contains infinitely many primes. The prime number theorem can be generalized to this problem, letting then if a and q are ka prime. There are also many deep and wide-ranging conjectures in number theory whose proofs seem too difficult for current techniques, such as the twin prime conjecture which asks whether there are infinitely many primes p such that p plus 2 is prime. On the assumption of the elliott halberstam conjecture it has been proven recently that there are infinitely many primes p such that p and k is prime for some positive even k at most 12. Also, it has been proven unconditionally that there are infinitely many primes p such that p and k is prime for some positive even k at most 246. One of the most important problems in additive number theory is Waring's problem, which asks whether it is possible, for any k greater than or equal to 2, to write any positive integer as the sum of a bounded number of kth powers. The case for squares, k equals 2, was answered by Lagrange in 1770, who proved that every positive integer is the sum of at most four squares. The general case was proved by Hilbert in 1909, using algebraic techniques which gave no explicit bounds. An important breakthrough was the application of analytic tools to the problem by Hardy and Littlewood. These techniques are known as the circle method, and give explicit upper bounds for the function g, the smallest number of kth powers needed, such as Vinogradov s bound. Problems and results Diophantin problems are concerned with integer solutions to polynomial equations, one may study the distribution of solutions, that is, counting solutions according to some measure of size or height. Multiplicative number theory An important example is the Gauss circle problem, which asks for integers points which satisfy. Multiplicative number theory deals with the distribution of the prime numbers, such as estimating the number of primes in an interval and includes the prime number theorem and Dirichlet's theorem on primes in arithmetic progressions, additive number theory is concerned with the additive structure of the integers, such as gold box conjecture that every even number greater than 2 is the sum of 2 primes. One of the main results in additive number theory is the solution to Waring's problem. In geometrical terms, Given a circle centered about the origin in the plane with radius r, the problem asks how many integer lattice points lie on or inside the circle. It is not hard to prove that the answer is, pi, r, 2, plus, e, r, plus e backslash comma, where, e, r slash, r, 2, 0, backslash comma backslash to zero backslash comma, as, r. Again, the difficult part and a great achievement of analytic number theory is obtaining specific upper bounds on the error term e. It was shown by Gauss that, e, r, equals, o, r. In general, an O error term would be possible with the unit circle replaced by the dilates of any bounded planar region with piecewise smooth boundary. Furthermore, replacing the unit circle by the unit square, the error term for the general problem can be as large as a linear function of R. Therefore, getting an error bound of the form, O, R, delta, for some, delta, zero, there exists a real number, c, such that, e, r, less than or equal to, c, r, 1 slash, 2, plus. 
Titch Marsh, Edward Charles, The Theory of the Riemann Zeta Function, Oxford University Press, H. Halberstam and H. E. Richard, Sieve Methods, R. C. Vaughan, The Hardy Littlewood Method, 2nd. Ed. In 2000 Huxley showed that, E, R, equals, O, R, 131 slash, 208, which is the best published result. Additive Number Theory Diophantin Problems Methods of Analytic Number Theory Dirichlet Series one of the most useful tools in multiplicative number theory are Dirichlet series, which are functions of a complex variable defined by an infinite series of the form. Depending on the choice of coefficients, a, n, this series may converge everywhere, nowhere, or on some half plane. In many cases, even where the series does not converge everywhere, the holomorphic function it defines may be analytically continued to a meromorphic function on the entire complex plane. The utility of functions like this in multiplicative problems can be seen in the formal identity. Hence the coefficients of the product of two Dirichlet series are the multiplicative convolutions of the original coefficients. Furthermore, Techniques such as partial summation and Taubarian theorems can be used to get information about the coefficients from analytic information about the Dirichlet series. Thus a common method for estimating a multiplicative function is to express it as a Dirichlet series, examine this series as a complex function and then convert this analytic information back into information about the original function. Euler showed that the fundamental theorem of arithmetic implies the Euler product. Euler's proof of the infinity of prime numbers makes use of the divergence of the term at the left-hand side for s equals 1, a purely analytic result. Euler was also the first to use analytical arguments for the purpose of studying properties of integers, specifically by constructing generating power series. This was the beginning of analytic number theory. Later, Riemann considered this function for complex values of S and showed that this function can be extended to a meromorphic function on the entire plane with a simple pole at S equals 1. This function is now known as the Riemann zeta function and is denoted by zeta. There is a plethora of literature on this function and the function is a special case of the more general Dirichlet L functions. Analytic number theorists are often interested in the error of approximations such as the prime number theorem. In this case, the error is smaller than x slash log x. Riemann's formula for pi shows that the error term in this approximation can be expressed in terms of the zeros of the zeta function. In his 1859 paper, Riemann conjectured that all the non-trivial zeros of zeta lie on the line, s, equals, 1 slash, 2, but never provided a proof of this statement. This famous and long-standing conjecture is known as the Riemann hypothesis and has many deep implications in number theory, in fact, many important theorems have been proved under the assumption that the hypothesis is true. For example, under the assumption of the Riemann hypothesis, the error term in the prime number theorem is, O, X, 1 slash, 2, plus, Epsilon Riemann zeta function In the early 20th century G. H. Hardy and Littlewood proved many results about the zeta function in an attempt to prove the Riemann hypothesis. In fact, in 1914, Hardy proved that there were infinitely many zeros of the zeta function on the critical line. This led to several theorems describing the density of the zeros on the critical line. On specialized aspects the following books have become especially well known. 
Notes Certain topics have not yet reached book form in any depth. Some examples are Montgomery's pair correlation conjecture and the work that initiated from it, the new results of Goldston, Pints, and Euladrum on small gaps between primes, and the Green Tau theorem showing that arbitrarily long arithmetic progressions of primes exist.